All right, so we've now built a grayscale filter. Um, let's keep adding to this idea. And in this example, we'll build a threshold filter. Um, this is built into the P5JS filters. You'll see it in places like Photoshop. Um, thresholding is also really commonly used for computer vision in our next project. We'll see that a lot. Um, basically what thresholding does is it looks at the brightness of each pixel. And if it's above a certain threshold, it'll make that pixel white. If it's below that threshold, it'll make it black. And we end up with this binary image that's only made of black and white pixels. Um, so I've got my template here and I've gone ahead and just um, added the for loop. We're gonna go through every single pixel in our image here. And you know, there's a couple ways that we can determine this brightness. Um, we looked at those in the grayscale video. For here, just to keep it simple, I'm gonna use just the red pixel value, um, but a cool challenge would be for you to plug in that more complex brightness calculation here. Um, so I'm going to say red is equal to img.get at x and y. Um, and then I'm going to grab the first value. Remember, get gives us a little list. So then I'm going to grab the first value. This just kind of combines a couple of steps into a single line of code, just a little cleaner and easier. Um, and then what I want to be able to do is determine if this red value is above or below the threshold. So I think what makes sense here is for me to um, create a variable called threshold. And our colors are in a range of zero to 255. So 127 is right about in the middle. And I'm gonna say if red is less than the threshold, I wanna make the pixel in the image black. So img.set xy, and we'll make it black. Otherwise, we'll set it to white. So now if I run this, we get this binary image as a result. And by changing the threshold value, um, it's gonna change at what point um, an image is made or a pixel is made black or white. So for example, if I make it very low, anything brighter than 50 is gonna be made white. So our overall image is very bright. If I make this 200, only pixels that are above 200 in brightness will be made white. So our overall image is much darker. Um, and that's it. Uh, the threshold is pretty easy. I'm sure you could imagine fun ways of improving this or adding to it. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing we could do instead of black and white, there's no reason we can't make these colors. So we could say, and now instead of being just black and white, we get these crazy complementary colors. Um, and I'm sure you could think of lots of other cool things to add. There is another example. There's not gonna be a video for it, um, but it's um, a really cool process called adaptive threshold. Um, I should have pulled this up for you. We can, uh, let's see, let's see if I can do this quick. Ah, too many buttons. Here we go. Um, it's in the image processing folder uh, called adaptive threshold. And I'll just show you what this looks like. Um, uh, so a, what adaptive threshold does is instead of having a global threshold value, it divides your images image into chunks and then it um, computes the average brightness in that chunk and then uses that as the threshold. Um, it's a good bit more complicated, um, but the code is annotated. You can go run it and try that out. Um, so if you're interested in this, I would definitely check it out. Um, adaptive thresholding can be really cool. It gets you um, effects that look like a old a crappy photocopier or a line drawing, stuff like that. So um, yeah, there's no video for that one, but you can definitely check that out. And the basic thresholding is something that, um, like I said, we'll be using a lot for things like computer vision and object tracking.